In a previous video, I showed you how to put all of your aux modes on just one aux channel. The normal way to do this is to have one aux channel for arming, one aux channel for angle mode, one aux channel for your beeper, one aux channel for turtle mode, and so on and so on, and you can see the problem. You pretty quickly run out of aux channels. And that's especially true if, like with Free Sky, you're using only eight channels to get like the best latency performance. Or with Crossfire, it supports up to 12 channels, but if you use eight channels, there's some performance advantage. And no one's been willing to tell me exactly what it is. So the ability to put all of your aux modes on just one channel really helps. It frees you up to do whatever you want with your remaining ones. Now, that video, it was pretty complicated and pretty advanced. And I found a better, easier way to put all of your aux modes on one channel. And this way, I'm pretty sure this way will work even with non-OpenTX radios. You got a Spectrum radio, you couldn't do that other method, but I'm pretty sure you can do this one with any radio, Spectrum, Futaba, Flysky, and yes, the Jumper T16, which is the radio I'm gonna demonstrate it on. You ready? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Guarantee, a guarantee you didn't already think of this or know of this. If you did, Tell me in the comments because you're a smart cookie, but you're going to learn something today. <laughs> Let's do it. I want to start with a demonstration of how I've got my switches set up. And I'm going to show you with a picture in picture of how I'm moving the switches and how the Betaflight modes are moving. And for some of you, this is gonna be enough to like make the idea click, but don't worry, we're gonna go in depth and I'm gonna explain how I discovered and how I set this up as well. So the arming switch is this switch on the upper left and that arms and disarms the quad. This switch here on the right face is three positions, up for nothing, middle position for angle mode and down position for turtle mode, which I have to scroll down to get that to show, but there you go. This switch here, the momentary, is the beeper. Now that's it. You could have more switches for GPS rescue or VTX pit mode. Everything I'm gonna show you will work with more complicated scenarios. Or you, you, if you put like half of your aux modes on one aux channel and then the other half of your aux modes on another aux channel, you still have saved something. So let me demonstrate to you how this works. Let's take a look here in my Jumper T16's mixer screen to see how I've assigned these switches. And what I want you to see is it starts with a 100% max value. So basically the max value forces the channel to a certain position or adds or subtracts a fixed value to the channel's position. So by setting the first line to max 100%, we basically say that the default position for the channel is going to be 100% or 2000. And you can see that that's true right now here in Betaflight, the tick mark is all the way up at 100%. Now let's take a closer look at the beeper line. So I'm gonna edit that. And what I want you to see is that is set to a source of max and a weight of 10%. So whenever this line becomes active, the channel will decrease its value by 10%. So sorry, it's set to minus 10%. And the, you'll notice that this switch parameter is set to switch SH down, so this line will only become active when switch SH is in the down position. In other words, when I pull this switch to activate the beeper, that line becomes active. We can demonstrate that here. Notice that the line becomes bolded when I pull that switch because of the SH down parameter. So the beeper switch is gonna subtract 10% from the channel value and the arming switch is gonna subtract 20% from the channel value. Here's why that is. Think about the relationship between, let's say, angle mode and beeper and uh, arming, okay? Angle mode is kind of like a, a, an umbrella. And when you're in angle mode, you could have the beeper on or you could have it off. You could be armed or you could be disarmed and any sort of combination of those things. So what we're going to do is angle mode is going to subtract 48% from the channel value. And I'll show you how I derive that in a second. So watch the tick mark when I go and activate angle mode, it goes to the top of this range. If I then subsequently pull the beeper switch, you'll see that it subtracts 10% and it goes down. And look what I've done 
with the beeper. I've added a range right here. So when the channel is in this range, both angle and beeper are active. And if I arm, you can see up here we've got an arming range also set so that we have arming and angle active. And then we might be armed and in angle and have a beeper. And so arming is gonna subtract 20% and beeper will subtract an additional 10%. And so if I pull that switch now, we've got this position with both beeper and arming and angle all active at the same time. So basically, we're gonna subdivide the channel range into umbrella ranges like angle mode. And within that range, we're gonna subtract either 10%, 20%, or 30%, depending on whether we have beeper, arming, or arming and beeper active at the same time. See, it's so simple. <laughs> What I want to do now is start with a completely blank modes tab and walk you through the process of actually setting this up and show you how I sort of figured this out so that you can kind of figure it out for your own as opposed to just sort of blindly copying these values. And where we're going to start in the T16 is we're going to start with our 100% max line, which is named disarm. We've got a minus 10% line assigned to our arm switch. And I'll let you get a closer look at that if you like. And the key parameters are the source is max, the weight is minus 10%, and the switch is whatever your arm switch is. Just highlight this so it's flashing, and then flip the arm switch to the arm position. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the beeper. My mistake. I screwed that up. So I pulled the wrong freaking switch. Let me fix that. So we're going to highlight the switch, pull the switch, so that it's in the uh, active position. So that's going to be SH down. And we're going to do the same thing for the arming mode. It's going to be max minus 20% and switch. And this is going to be your arming switch in whatever your arming position is. Now that's going to be the same pretty much for all the setups. So let's start by just setting up the basic arming and disarming mode. And I'm going to highlight arm and hit add range. This is going to be aux one. And we're going to put the arming switch in the disarm position. And we can see that when the switch is in the disarm position, the channel goes to the maximum value. So then we'll put the switch in the arm position and we'll see it decreases by 10%. And what we want to do is just hide, highlight that so that it's covering the arm position and not covering the disarm position. And we'll save that and we'll just confirm that that works. And it, it goes red because it won't actually arm the quad while we're plugged into the configurator, but that's fine. Everything's working correctly. Okay. We're done. The next thing let's do is let's handle the interaction between the beeper and the arming mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the beeper and here we run into a potential first problem. Do you see that when I pull the beeper switch, we almost go into the arming mode, right? If we had pulled this just a little further back, then when we pull the beeper switch, we would actually arm the quad. So you're gonna to have to be careful about the overlap here and get your ranges exactly right. So I'm gonna pull the beeper switch and what I wanna make sure is that the beeper mode cannot cause the quad to arm. But when I flip the arming switch, we go into arming. Great, that's perfect. And then when I'm armed and I pull the beeper, aha, now do you see that we disarmed? So we wanna just drag the arming mode out just a little bit more so that activating the beeper doesn't cause us to disarm. And if we're disarmed, activating the beeper doesn't cause us to arm. Okay, we're looking good. Next, we're gonna add a buzzer beeper. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna hit add range. I'm gonna set that to aux one. And just to clean up the screen, I'm gonna hide the unused modes. Now, what I need is when I pull the buzzer, I need the buzzer to active, activate. I'm gonna do that by making this as small as I can and drag it just so it covers this range and hit save. And now, yes, beeper is active when I pull. And if I arm, beeper does not become active, looking good so far. And if I am armed and I pull the beeper, oh, hang on, I got a problem here. Beeper is not active. So when I arm and I pull beeper, I need the beeper to active. I'm just gonna hit add range and add another range. I'm gonna make it as small as I can. 
and put it right here, aux1. So now the functionality seems correct. And I encourage you at every step of the way to double check the functionality because if you screw this up, you're going to mean to put it in angle mode and it's going to arm instead and you never want your quad arming when you don't really mean it to. So let's double check. Beeper by itself, correct. Only beeper and not arming. Arming by itself, correct. Arming and beeper, correct. The functionality is exactly correct. Now let's move on to angle mode. And to do that, we're going to need to add another line here to the mixer. So I'm going to long press and insert after. The mix name, we can name it angle. Okay. The source is going to be max. And the weight, what we want to do is we want to find a new sort of starting position for this group of functions. And the key thing we need to know is that everything we add, like when we add arming or buzzer to the angle mode, it's going to reduce the channel value. So we're going to find the new sort of highest channel position that doesn't conflict with anything else. And I'm just going to take the weight and I'm going to scroll it downward and watch that yellow tick mark here until that yellow tick mark moves. There we go. So as we get to negative values, it starts sub subtracting from the channel. I'm going to move that tick mark down until it moves just barely to the left of all the stuff I already did. And it looks like that value is minus 44%, but I don't care. I'm just going to move that tick mark until it's just clear of the stuff I already set up. Okay. And then we need to assign the switch. And that switch is going to be whichever switch we're going to use for angle mode. So in my case, it's that front three position. I'm just going to move that three position to the middle position, which I use for angle mode. You put your switch in whatever position you want angle mode to be. And there you go. Now, we'll turn off hide unused modes. We'll add a range for angle mode. We'll set that to aux1. We'll hide the unused modes just to clean up the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that middle position switch in angle mode. And I'm going to drag this up so it covers angle mode. And let's just make sure, again, that we don't have any conflicts. Like, let me... Here's the top search result. Gee, shut up. I'm not talking to you. I'm going to disarm, arm, buzzer, all good. Not, interfa not interacting with angle mode in any way. We're going to put it in angle mode. And then we're going to add in the other stuff. So arming will lower it by uh, 10, 10%, 20%, whatever it was. So we're going to add an arming range. And this will be the situation where we are armed and in angle mode. And then buzzer, I'm armed, buzzer, holding the buzzer. And we're going to add another beeper range, aux1 and Okay. All righty. And finally, we need to cover the scenario where we are armed and pulling the beeper at the same time. And we'll add another arming range here. Okay. And we'll add another beeper range here. And finally, the lowest channel position will be armed and beeper at the same time because both of them subtract. And so we're just going to take this angle mode here and drag the bottom of angle mode now to be the same as that lowest position. So 1600 here. Great. And now here again, we're just going to double check our functionality. So angle mode is on and none of the other modes are active. That's as it should be. If I then arm. Now we have angle and arm, that's correct. If I then pull the buzzer, we have angle, arm, and buzzer, that's correct. And if I disarm and pull the buzzer, we have angle and buzzer only and not arming. That's all correct. That's how we did angle mode. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for turtle mode. So we're gonna insert after. The mix name is gonna be turtle. If you long press on those alphanumeric ones, then uh, it changes from lowercase to capital. That's how I'm doing that. The source is going to be max. And to find the weight, 
we're just going to scroll down until we get to the very bottom of all that angle mode stuff we did. So the tick mark now is below all that angle mode stuff we did, and we can just continue uh, doing the same thing as we did with angle. Oh, whip, I just made a mistake. Here's the mistake I just made. You notice that right now, angle mode is active. When we find the starting point for the range that we're gonna be working in, everything has to be disabled. So, okay, so now with angle mode inactive, see I ended up, you see that I ended up at minus 44, but I really wanna keep going because this is turtle mode is gonna be at, I guess, minus 88, huh? Makes sort of makes sense. If one of them was 44, the next would be 88. Doesn't make sense. Now for turtle mode, our switch is gonna be this three position here. I'm gonna put that in the down position and SD down and, and we're gonna add turtle mode range, add flip crash, add range, aux one, save, hide unused modes, and let's activate flip crash, and we'll drag the very top of the range to right there, okay? And then we're gonna go through and do the exact same thing we did with angle mode, where we have all the combinations of beeper and armed and disarmed and so forth. Some people might argue that there's no point in having beeper and flip crash active at the same time, because when you activate flip crash, the beeper starts going off by itself just to warn you. And that may be true, in which case you would just leave out the beeper modes. You would only have arm and disarm and turtle mode. But, well, let's do that. Let's do that. It's gonna be very simple because all I need to do is have flip crash and this is disarmed and this is gonna be armed. And that's actually gonna be the end of it. So I'll just drag this to just outside of that so that we have flip crash active when both armed and disarmed. And then I'm gonna go up and add a new arming mode. I'll put the switch in the armed position and I'll drag this to cover that position. And then we have armed, disarmed, turtle mode. And we'll just make sure that angle mode doesn't like overlap that in any way. Yeah, so angle mode's not gonna accidentally activate flip crash. Boom, that's it, we're done. So I admit this is way more complicated than a lot of people are gonna wanna deal with, but it is so freaking powerful, this ability to combine these things and save yourself aux channels. If you need to use an aux channel for RSSI, you know, or if you are just running out of aux channels because you've got pit mode and GPS rescue and arming and da 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 da, da. The, Even if you don't put all of your aux functions on one channel, the ability to combine several of them onto one channel can really help you out and it's really powerful. And this additive method that I came up with where each function subtracts a certain percent from the channel value, this is actually something you could do on any, I think any programmable radio because they all have the ability to do this basic thing. So one final word of caution, before you go fly this with a real quad, test every possible combination of the switches to make sure that at no point does the arming mode turn on when you don't mean it to? This is such a big deal. So what I would do is I would flip disarmed. Okay, so now we're disarmed. And now I'm gonna flip the switches in every other possible combination. So angle mode, turtle mode. Arming did not come on. Buzzer, buzzer. Okay, and now buzzer, active and angle mode and turtle mode. At no point does the arming come on. So then I'm gonna arm. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Angle, okay, angle, turtle, buzzer. Oh, I found a mistake. What's the mistake? Oh, oh, I love it. I love it when I find a mistake. I left out the buzzer, but you see that when I, I didn't set up a buzzer mode, but the buzzer switch still reduces the arming the channel position by whatever 10%, which means that it's actually activating the buzzer. So what I need to do is hold the buzzer and drag this just a little bit lower. 
and I need to make sure that turtle mode, you see that turtle mode has deactivated when I pull the buzzer? I need to drag that just a little further down. Ooh, see that final check, so important. Now, armed, turtle mode, buzzer has no effect. I mean, the buzzer is affecting the channel position, but it's not affecting our modes at all. That switch essentially has no function when we're in turtle mode. Angle, buzzer, disarm, buzzer, everything's working right. Yay, now you're ready to go fly. I really hope that you loved this video. This is one of the, I focus a lot of my videos on beginners, but every so often I feel the need to bang out a real head cracker and show you guys I'm still the FPV know-it-all. <laughs> no. Thank you guys so much for watching. Small reminder, this is part of my playlist of videos about the Jumper T16. Although, as I've said before, this technique does apply to any open TX radio for sure and probably any other radio. If you learned something from this, can I remind you that this is my full-time job, making videos like this and helping you get more out of your equipment. That's what I do for a living. And if you want to help support me, I have a Patreon. You can join it down in the video description for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. In addition, most of my videos have affiliate links. For example, this video is going to have affiliate links for the Jumper T16 because that's the radio that I'm using. And if you would like to purchase anything at all, you don't have to buy the Jumper T16. Just click the link and make any purchase. After you click that affiliate link, I get a small commission and it's a really easy way for you to help support me and it doesn't cost you anything. I'm out of here. I got more videos to make today, uh, but uh, that's going to do it for you. Happy flying. That's a weird, that's a weird outro. Uh, that's going to do it for you. You're out of here. <laughs> Happy flying, everybody. <laughs>